my beautiful friends and family. This is a, a little Christmas video about something very traditional in Denmark and that's rice pudding. And so that's what we're going to make today. And uh, I know that rice is not is a grain and <laughs> when you're on a healing diet it's uh, best to avoid. But um, I love this rice pudding and it's only this time of the year so I make it and I actually uh, feel it's quite uh, quite easy to digest. So um, I'm going to show you how to make it and I'm going to tell you a little bit about the, the tradition of uh, rice pudding. Uh, so here I have some white rice, they're organic, and I've just soaked them uh, in water with a little bit of salt all night and that makes a very nice pudding I think. And uh, here I have my beautiful milk from the cow. And uh, I'm going to boil this uh, milk, bring it to a boiling point, and then I'm going to pour this in. And this is two deciliters of rice that has been soaked all night. Uh, that so I took two deciliters of dry rice and soaked it. And I'm going to use about one and a quarter liter of, of milk. And uh, we talk so much about raw milk and how good it is, and uh, of course we're going to kill all the beautiful bacteria. But as I said, it's uh, actually quite easy to digest, I think. And uh, it's beautiful when it's something you really like to eat, and it's something that's been done for a long time. It's just a really good part of Christmas, I think. So I've got this beautiful old pot uh, that I, I love, I always use, and it's uh, <laughs> been used for many years. I think it's Norwegian, and it has it's a it's a cast iron pot, and it has this uh, beautiful handle on it. So that's my rice pudding pot, and it goes well on the uh, on the stove. So um, I'm going to boil boil my milk. I think this is about put it on the heat and just watch it uh, while you're heating it because just like you know when you're heating milk just watch out it doesn't boil so I've got myself a nice a new spoon I rub with ghee uh, it, because if it smells of if it tastes of curry it's going to go into the, the pudding so um, uh, let's start the process So now it's been, uh, I put the rice into the boiling water and uh, it's been boiling for about, on very, very low heat, for about half an hour. It has to, it has to cook for about an hour and a half or so, on very, very low heat. And you'll see it just gets thicker and thicker as the process goes. Just keep stirring once in a while so it doesn't burn. Now here we have the porridge that has been cooking for about an hour and a half and it's nearly ready. I'll just leave the lid off. I've had the lid on all the time. So by leaving the lid off it just gets a little bit thicker and I'll just tell you a little bit about rice pudding. Yeah, uh, rice pudding is uh, something very Danish and very traditional uh, as it is now and uh, you have it with cinnamon, I'll show you that, and butter. And um, in old times they actually ate lots of porridge. And uh, this, at Christ they were most people were very poor, and they would eat porridge made out of barley or buckwheat. And they didn't have rice, of course, so rice is quite new, really. And uh, they didn't always have lots of milk, so they would use water. So it's a lot of uh, poor people would be living off grain and and water. But at Christmas time, it was special. And uh, so they would have sweet porridge, they called it. So they would make this that I'm making uh, with barley or buckwheat, and they would cook it with milk. So they would um, uh, they would use their milk for this to have this meal because it was a special time of the year. 
so it was the they were going to have something uh, very tasty and nice. Um, so, and I will have to tell you about uh, the little uh, the little uh, gnome or house gnome that we believe in in Denmark, and uh, I believe they they do exist. <laughs> Most people don't, um, but um, it's a little it's like a Santa's helper, but it only it's uh, like a little elf and. Uh, they were very superstitious, or very. They believed in these in the in the old times, and um, and as I said, I believe they exist. But I, they exist in all sorts of forms. I think there's all sorts of beings around us that we just can't see. But they believed that um, that every farm would have one of these nisa uh, or more, uh, and he was especially around the horses. Uh, and he was in the stables, and he was looking after the animals and just making sure that everything was going well on the farm. But he could, if you didn't treat him well, he could actually uh, get in quite a, a bad mood and tease you and do things and even be quite nasty. So in old times they would put po porridge out, um, this sweet porridge or rice pudding, uh, out into the stable uh, to feed him so that he had uh, you treated him well so that uh, everything would be fine on your farm. Um, and of course, uh, it's something very old from old times that they believed in good spirits and evil spirits. And uh, and when apparently when Christianity came, they weren't allowed to talk about these misa. But um, <laughs> they are very much a part of, of uh, Danish Christmas. Uh, and they have nothing really to do with with Christmas presents or Santa Claus. It's um, a special little house elf uh, that is, uh, and he wears a little a little hat, and it's red. So um, often kids will wear these uh, red little hats, looking like Nisa. And there's many songs where you you sing about the Nisa. So when our kids were little, uh, we would tell them about the Nisa and uh, and we would make porridge and put out into the stable and usually it was the wild cat that came and ate all the ate, or ate some of the porridge and it was quite amazing <laughs> when they came out the next morning some of the porridge was gone or all the porridge was gone um, but uh, yes I'll, I'll just uh, show you the the rice pudding and I think it's very nice now and we're going to pour it into the, I just make one. Give my husband one in a little while, and uh, just finish this here. Like no, I can't do that. Anyway, get the camera over here. So you can see. You pour it up. Very, very. Oh, actually, I have to put salt in it just the same. You put about a teaspoon, a half to a whole teaspoon. Mix it well around. Get a nice clean plate here. Pour it in. And on it, you put your cinnamon and sugar. Whoops! And I use, I just use stevia and cinnamon. And then you put your butter, which we have here, onto it. Lovely raw butter. And I just read in a book of the other, oh, just just then. But in old times, they would the lady of the house or the farmer wife. She would actually make a cross and then put the butter into the cross. So that was when when Christianity came, of course. And um, yeah, what was the 
Oh yes, you have uh, you have beer with this, and uh, yeah. So I'll go and get some beer. And this is uh, a Santa Claus on the beer here. Uh, it's not a Nisa. And you have that. It's a sweet malt beer. And it has very little alcohol. But in old times, uh, beer is a very, um, very Danish thing and has been, they used to drink it. I mean, uh, in old times, the water wasn't clean, and um, to to get clean water, you actually made beer because the the fermenting process killed off the bacteria. So you have this sweet beer with it, and here we go. Mmm. So nice. And have a wonderful Christmas. <laughs> See you. <laughs> Cheers. I'll sing a little Nisa song for you. Så kan han have alle de julegatter, og de danser løstigt rundt i ring.